This is Epsilon Iridani, and this is the sun. Obviously, they're not right next to each other. That would mean we would live in a binary star system. Epsilon Iridani is a bit further away from us, a few light years away from us. It is a star in the spectral type K2V, which is also called a K dwarf or orange dwarf star. It is the stage of stellar evolution that the sun will move into as the sun ages and cools. For my readers, I want them to pay attention to what's correct on here and what's bogus. A K-type main sequence star, KV, also known to as also known as an orange dwarf or K-dwarf, is a main sequence. You can ignore that. Hydrogen burning, you can ignore that too of special type K and luminosity class V. These stars are intermediate in size between red M-type main sequence stars. You can ignore that. Just remember M-type, that means red dwarf. And yellow G-type main sequence stars. Don't look at the main sequence again, just look at G-type. They're brighter in yellow. The Ks, or orange dwarfs, have masses between 0.6 to 0.9 times the mass of the sun, and surface temperature is between 3900 and 5200 K. The reason why it's cooler is because the rate of plasma recombination is slowing down considerably, and the star is evolving. Better known examples include Alpha Centauri b, K1v, and Epsilon Indy. You can ignore the rest of this, this is bogus nonsense see here. Here's some other types of stars. Hang on. Epsilon Iridani. That's the one I was showing you a picture of. 61 Cygni. And then there's 70 Opichuchi, oh, I think. 107 Piscium. HD 219134. TW Piscus Austrini. HD 120467 and 61 Cygni. Those are uh, some K uh, special stars, as well as, you know, Alpha Centauri B, I already said that one, Galaxy 86 and 54 Piscium. Properly placing Epsilon Iridani on the stellar evolution cycle is pretty easy. Just take its spectrum and place it onto the diagram. Epsilon Iridani, according to stellar metamorphosis, is north of Galaxy 581. It's up here, right below the sun, right here. In a future video, I will pick out a few red dwarf stars and early stage orange or late stage orange dwarfs, orange dwarfs, which are about right here. But Epsilon Iridini is cooling and shrinking, and it was as bright and as big as the sun at one point. Right now it's cooling and dying, and the plasma is recombining into gas, and its spectrum is diminishing uh, in color and in heat intensity as well. For those readers who are new to this theory, the star is the new planet, and the planet is the ancient star. Stellar evolution is the process when the star is born, it cools and dies and combines its elements into molecules. This meaning the most important process in stellar evolution concerns chemistry, electrochemistry, and thermodynamics. Those three real uh, studies are the mainstay of 21st century star science. So when you see things such as the fusion model or hydrogen burning or main sequence or all that no nonsense, you, you can ignore it safely. It, it, it's, it's all wrong. Young stars are hollow structures. They're like giant uh, giant bubbles, giant soap bubbles, which collapse upon themselves. The reason why they're so big is because they're so hot. That's basic thermodynamics. The hotter the body is, the more, the more it will expand. 
and the cold bodies will contract and as it cools it contracts all right I think that should cover this for now oh, yeah I should put the date on there uh, it's January 17th 2015 oh and I forgot to uh, state this um, a lot of this you can ignore because it's wrong I just want to point out the stuff they have correct on here its age is estimated at less than a billion years that's that's correct it's actually very young it's more like uh, 200 million years old um, they say because of its youth Epsilon Iridani has a higher level of magnetic activity than the present-day Sun this is complete nonsense it has a higher level of mag magnetic activity because the fields is becoming global it's going from chaotic random magnetic fields like the Sun has to a global magnetic field as the star cools and dies which then will become a full global magnetic field when it becomes a red dwarf slash brown dwarf but more on that later and it also has stellar winds 30 times as strong as the Sun and the reason why the stellar winds are a lot stronger is because number one the gravitational pull of the star is diminishing considerably meaning when the material undergoes chemical heterolysis meaning the molecules break up into ionized parts and leave the surface it becomes easier to escape the star so there's going to obviously be more stellar wind as well as the process is a lot more rapid because the plasma becomes more gaseous and as it becomes more gaseous when there is a solar flaring event more gas can get ejected it's not electromagnetically held in place it's much more uh, it becomes easier to uh, uh, forcing than gaseous material or than plasmatic material in other words what I'm saying is gaseous material is easier to move around than plasmatic material because plasmatic material basically is very very sticky in a way I'll go over more about that later Alright, I think that should sum it up.